So hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, inviting me. And thank you for coming. So I will, yeah, I will present the, what I think are the most uh, important next challenges of Bitcoin, or how to make decentralized alternative to the financial system succeed. A bit about myself. I started working on Bitcoin in 2015 at Ledger. Then I worked uh, almost a year and a half in, uh, on Ethereum and then came back to Bitcoin and focusing on technical training. So this is what uh, I think are the most uh, relevant uh, topics, the, the challenges, mining and fee market the Lightning Network, the digital signature algorithm, privacy and education contribution. So before talking about uh, the, the next challenges, a bit of uh, retrospective, I think um, Bitcoin did an amazing job so far with all the technical in, uh, improvements um, without introducing consensus bug. Uh, it's not easy to deploy uh, to deploy uh, upgrade on on a blockchain, <coughs> and any any bug can cause a, a consensus uh, fork. So the main two are re the two recent uh, upgrade are segre segregated witness and uh, lightning network, which is on top of it, and a lot of things that I will not detail uh, today. So. Um, one of the biggest uh, challenges, in my opinion, is the um, centralization of uh, mining production. Um, so we have uh, semiconductor foundries um, and uh, manufacturers. So the manufacturers will ask uh, a foundry to, to print, to, f uh, to found a, a chip. So we have two main uh, uh, foundries, TS TSMC and uh, Samsung. Um, we could have more like uh, Global Foundries or Intel. And we have manufacturers. So until very recently, we had only one uh, manufacturer, uh, namely Bitmain. So we are, we are seeing uh, more uh, manufacturer like uh, along mining and GMO miner. Um, so they just appeared uh, this year. So it's good, but we need more. Also, uh, another issue is the um, information asymmetry between uh, manufacturers and customers, because the manufacturers have all the most of the, all the information on the the mining the miner park, uh, how much uh, batches they will uh, release, uh, um, the date the date of uh, shipment, so they have uh, a much. Uh, um, greater um, information about um, they can project the mining difficulty and uh, return on investment uh, much easier than uh, the customer. Um, so maybe game theory can, can help on that. Um, also, I will say that mining market is uh, just starting to mature. So we need, uh, there is a lot to do uh, in this space, but let's see. Um, regarding uh, mining uh, centralization, so I think this is the most uh, biggest uh, challenge on, uh, of Bitcoin today. Um, Pierre Rochard mentioned that we have like 12 pool operators, maybe five, uh, five of them are uh, re represent 15% each of, uh, so, and <coughs> the way it works like, is um, based on the strat stratum protocol. Um, and this protocol is, um, it has a lot of issues. It's, um, first, it's poorly documented. It's not, it's not a beep. Um, it's, so it's almost not open, it's not open enough. And um, the pool operator is uh, the one uh, running the, the node. So, and the, fa the mine, mining farmers are just directing the hash rate to pool operator. 
So they are not in charge, the pool operators in charge. So if we consider that we have like five, mm, uh, five big uh, pool operator on, on Bitcoin, um, it's even more centralized than EOS. And it's hard to admit, but this is true. So first, we, I think we have to change the Stratum protocol. It's very important. And uh, we have a, a new proposal from uh, Matt, Matt Corallo uh, called Better Hash, which uh, actually does that, uh, decoupling the work and the uh, payout protocols. So with that uh, new protocol, the mining farms will run nodes and uh, create their, their block, block template themselves. And in that way, um, they are back in charge of uh, mining. And the, the pool operator is only responsible for uh, pool payouts. So it will um, allow a much more decentralized uh, mining uh, network. <coughs> um, also, uh, we can develop uh, further the um, mining pool, um, decentralized mining pool, like P2 pool. So today it represents like 1% uh, of the network, um, of the hash rate, sorry. Um, it has a lot of issues, it's, um, it's not scalable. Um, and it, uh, it has a lot of uh, high variance, uh, payout variance, um, meaning that um, you can be paid, as a miner you will be paid uh, you are not always uh, pay the same amount. It uh, fluctuates. Uh, we have a new proposal from uh, Chris Belker uh, suggesting uh, using a lightning network to, to improve the, the payout variance. All right, and <coughs> I uh, also uh, quickly mentioned the um, um, energetical, uh, the environmental concerns of mining. Um, so proof of work will always consume energy, but maybe we can uh, uh, consume in a smart way using uh, excess, uh, excess energy or renew renewable energy. Or maybe um, focusing on economy of this scale, uh, having s small miners uh, much more spread out. Another challenge is the fee market. So we have uh, the block reward, which is fixed and um, which is halved every four years on average. And we have the, the fee transaction fees. So the next halving is in two, two years. And the block reward will be 6.25 uh, uh, Bitcoin. Um, and the issue is that um, <coughs> we need miner to be profitable. Uh, we need we need miner to secure the network, and we need them to be profitable. So if we don't have uh, enough fees, it will be an issue. So currently, we just rely on the fact that uh, the price we expect the price to to double every every four years, but it's not. Uh, uh, um, a secure uh, assumption. So we we need um, maybe to change the um, the algorithm to for uh, for uh, fee selection. Uh, finding an another algorithm to maximize the 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 revenue of the miners and uh, some uh, researcher like Lavi Satai and Zoa uh, suggested. Uh, this uh, this uh, new kind of uh, of algorithms, uh, new, a new type of auction. Uh, basically, for, for example, the monopolistic price mechanism will uh, select uh, and the um, the lowest uh, the lowest bid is like an auction, and you can pay whatever you want, 
and it will be everybody will pay um, the lowest the lowest uh, bid in a, in a block. Next, we have a Lightning Network. So it's important for Bitcoin because um, they choose to to bet on that to to in order to scale instead of in increasing the block size. So there is uh, many technical challenges like uh, channel monitoring, routing, etc. I think uh, it's going well for now. Uh, it's uh, evolving very quickly. Um, it can go wrong, of course, but uh, it's very new, so we need time to, to see. Next, a uh, digital signature algorithm. So today we are focusing, Bitcoin Core would like to replace uh, ECDSA with uh, elliptic curve Schnorr uh, algorithm. So Peter Vuel just uh, released uh, the Bitcoin improvement proposal two days ago, three days ago. Um, it will allow uh, more efficiency, more privacy, and more functionality. We can do key aggregation, key, uh, signature aggregation, batch validation, where you, you will just validate all the block uh, in one go. So it will be much more efficient. It will also improve privacy because we can do uh, private multi-signature. Um, the transaction will be, will be cheaper. So it will incentivize uh, using uh, mixing protocols like Conjoin. And it's uh, prove provably secure. Um, as far as I know, ECDSI is not uh, really provably secure. It's not, it doesn't rely on uh, on a sound mathematical uh, model. It's just that um, it has been around since uh, 20 years now and hasn't been, been uh, cracked. <coughs> so we, we guess, uh, we suppose that it's secure, but not based on mathematics. Schnorr is not cont uh, control resistant because um, it's also s based on the same uh, mat mathematical assumption than uh, than ECDSA, the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem. Um, and why is it a challenge? Because uh, we, we, a lot of new developments rely on Shor, on Schnorr for, um, yeah, like the taproot, scriptless script, uh, discrete logarithm contracts, privacy. So we need, uh, we need uh, Schnorr to succeed in order to, to see all these new developments. Um, I, been, uh, I, I did a slide on quantum computing. Um, so, first of all, uh, I think um, this topic is very overhyped. Um, and it's hard to have a, a firm, firm the, the opinion. Uh, you need to be uh, a physicist, and uh, I, I am not. So I, I will just expose the two, two sides. We have quantum skepticism. Um, I, I know uh, Gilles Calai, for example, which is a mathematician and a renowned physicist um, in uh, the University of Jer Jerusalem, which uh, don't uh, think quantum computing will, be, uh, will ever, ever, ever succeed. Most of the Bitcoin core developers don't uh, don't think that quantum computing is a threat, and that you will need uh, like thousands of qubits to to break ECDSA. So we have we have a lot of time. On the other side, uh, I saw a recent uh, uh, academic paper saying that ECDSA could be broke, broken in ten years. So we have two sides. It's hard to take a, uh, uh, an opinion. But in my, uh, personally, I'm more skepti skeptical. In case uh, it's an issue, we have uh, potential solutions, um, namely hash-based cryptography and uh, lattice-based cryptography. So even if it's not uh, an issue right now, I think it's good to, to keep an eye on, on it. 
then privacy. Privacy and fungibility are essential properties of uh, sound money. Um, today, we don't have any privacy. Uh, we can run a node uh, on Tor, but uh, besides that, uh, we don't have any, all the information in the transaction are in, in clear. So we need to develop further the mixing protocols. Um, we have today, um, a lot have been developed, uh, CoinJoin, CoinShuffle, CoinShuffle++, plus plus, Value Shuffle, Zero Link. So the most advanced today, um, the one who, who should uh, be implemented is um, the, the Zero Link framework with implemented as a, a was the Wasabi wallet from uh, Nopara. So I think it's very promising, but we have maybe a lack of, uh, of researchers and developers because I think he's uh, almost alone on, on that. And also Coin Shuffle, Coin Shuffle++, plus plus, Value Shuffle are all from the same uh, team of uh, researchers in uh, an, an university in, uh, in Germany. So we need a lot more people working on that. Confidential transaction is, um, is the idea to find a, a technology that uh, allows to uh, hide the amount of a transaction. We had a bullet proof um, earlier this, this year, which um, uh, reduced the, the tr transaction size, but it's not enough. The transaction is uh, still uh, still uh, too big. <coughs> so we need to improve um, confidential transaction, having a, a smaller uh, smaller commitment. On the transaction broca broadcasting, we have a new uh, proposal called uh, Dande Dandelion. Uh, I think we should have a beep soon. On transaction retrieval, so most uh, all, all light clients uh, rely on uh, on uh, bloom filters, and this uh, technology leaks too much information. Um, an attacker can know what what are your transaction. So we have a new proposal called uh, compact client side filtering, implemented in Neutrino, which is a Lightning uh, network node. So again, uh, we need to develop all, all of that. And private uh, smart contracts, uh, tap root, uh, graph root. So again, a lot of uh, new developments. Education also is a challenge because there is quite a lot to learn, uh, namely cryptography, key management, game theory, computer science, P2Peer network hardware, uh, system administration, economy, uh, marketing and scam, because there is a lot of scam in the industry. So I think I, uh, high school should prepare uh, people for Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, oh, Bitcoin is uh, an open source project. Um, as uh, Pierre uh, mentioned, all the researchers and developers working on Bitcoin are self-motivated. Uh, they are not; uh, they are paid by the, by their company, or sometimes not not paid at all. So it's a really a community effort, and we need everyone. I think I think there is like <coughs> there is more and more contributors. But the critical work is done by 15, 12, uh, 20 people, uh, and it's always the same people. So we need a much more contribution. And if you can't contribute, you can donate also. In conclusion, um, Bitcoin did an amazing so job so far, but the battle is uh, far from being won. Everything can go wrong, and especially I will come uh, uh, mention again the centralization of mining. Uh, Bitcoin is 
very centralized today. Um, we need to, fee to, to face the truth and uh, act on it. Um, a rhetoric I, I see, we often see, is uh, blockchain, not Bitcoin. I don't believe in uh, this uh, rhetoric because I think Bitcoin needs to succeed in order to, to see other projects succeed. And the whole industry is based around, uh, has been based around Bitcoin. If Bitcoin fails, uh, um, I think the whole industry will collapse. We have to, to remember that it's an experimental technology and even the, the younger projects are even more experimental. Everyone is uh, invited to contribute and every challenge as I mentioned are a business oppor opportunity. Yeah, this is all what I have. Hi, thanks for the talk. Um, could you elaborate on blockchain, not Bitcoin? Yes. Um, even if Bitcoin fails, perhaps some other cryptocurrencies fail, but blockchain can still be used for many other purposes. Yes. Um, maybe I can... Uh, I may... Uh, come on. Down. I may appear... Uh, like a Bitcoin maximalist uh, side short. But um, you have to, to, you have to be in the, in the I don't know how, how, how long you are in uh, this in industry. Um, <coughs> I think most of the real in innovation are coming from Bitcoin. We have interesting uh, development in other projects, but Bitcoin did uh, like did all the like eighty percent of the job, and the real cryptography, the main cryptographic researchers are working on Bitcoin. All the the economic, uh, the, the the finance, uh, the exchanges are based on on Bitcoin. Well, there is everything is relying on Bitcoin. Uh, and also the public perception. Mm. So, yeah. Thank you very much. I especially like your slide about education. So if you have all these courses, there's not much left over for other subjects. Uh, uh, I find that interesting. But I have one question, and, um, or it's more like a comment. You said that it's important that miners are being compensated for what they are doing and that every four years the price of Bitcoin is put in half and then uh, we, we should make sure that the miners are staying. Why is that an issue? Uh, because we know, as we've heard before, miners are working together in pools. So if the, the price is going down, that some miners might leave, some nodes might leave, but in, in the end we have a big pool, a couple of big pools anyway, so we're not talking about single nodes, and we're just talking about leaving, some people leaving, but we still have enough uh, to, to mine. Yeah. <coughs> um. It can, I think it can lead to, to centralization if uh, the smaller uh, mining farms are leaving. Yeah. Um, yeah, but isn't it the case right now that we have a couple of big players, I think you mentioned 12 before, but if you put together the, the biggest three or four, then have they have more than 50% or something like that. I don't know the newest numbers, but it's something like that. Yeah, and it can be worse, to <laughs> it can be worse. Mm -hmm. And even, it seems to me that uh, there is a, um, the, this uh, increase in hash rate to, uh, that we see today, like we, we are taking uh, five, ten percent each each week. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, we can we can guess that uh, we have uh, an actor, the main actor that is trying to to push away the competitors. Um, and mining is very bad, uh, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, if uh, mining is not profitable, it will be even worse. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I agree with that. And I just wanted to add also that um, if, if the hash rate is too low because there aren't enough 
there isn't enough money to be made in mining. Um, today, we usually suggest to wait six confirmations before accepting a transaction as being deep enough in the blockchain that it's not going to uh, be essentially double spent or reversed or reworked out. Um, and I think that if, if the hash rate were too low, then that six confirmations, we might have to say, well, you need 60 confirmations uh, for there to be enough proof of work uh, into it so that it's not economical for someone to come along and reverse it. Um, and 60 confirmations times 10 minutes each uh, it can start to be a long time. I don't, if, if, I don't know if that'll be a practical problem or not, but um, I, I actually wanted to follow up on the question you had for me, which was uh, like having a, a way of um, communicating and organizing all of these improvements because you went through all of these different proposals and uh, th they're all fascinating in their own right and yet we, we hear very little about them and they're, they're kind of siloed. And uh, do you have some ideas on how to make sure that these, that the research and the proposals going on in Bitcoin uh, get communicated Obviously, you're doing it right now <laughs> at today's event, uh, but I think that we could see more of that online and offline. Yeah, communication. Um, it's interesting to have a communication in, in a decentralized organization like Bitcoin. Who is supposed, who has the right to talk uh, for Bitcoin? Uh, and some, yeah. Some people are uh, like Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin dot com <laughs> are trying to to communicate communicate for uh, for Bitcoin. Um, yeah, we should. Have, I think we should have uh, Bitcoin Core should uh, should be more proactive in, in that uh, in that regard. Also, it's um, communication. Communication is not an issue when you are um, familiar with Bitcoin. Uh, you know that you have to go to the mailing list and to the Slack. And, but when you are a newcomer, it's very, very complicated. Uh, it's a mess. <laughs> you want to understand Bitcoin, but you don't know where to go. You go to Bitcoin.com because this is Bitcoin. Uh, so, yeah, there is a, there is a lack of uh, communication. Maybe. Yeah, so um, I have a question, but before that, I'm actually going to comment a little bit on the previous question about mining. Um, what if the, like at the block reward, we are not paying enough for the miners? Um, it's a problem that we we haven't, we don't have a, um, a good insight on what will happen. Because right now, well, until now, um, the limitation in, in mining is not actually the price of Bitcoin. It's the capacity of producing these chips. So we are always waiting for more chips to go out of the foundry. So at some point, we might reach a point where there is actually more offer than demand for these chips. And that will be a problem for the industry because we'll have to think about who can hold these chips. And if miners are stopping to mine, it doesn't mean they are destroying the miners. So a state or whatever could accumulate this hashing power and then attack the network. We have never seen that until now because the price keep going up and the limiting factor is the production of, of chips. Um, that's just something I wanted to mention. So ha we have no idea what will happen. Uh, it's something that we call the Bitcoin doomsday. Um, but yeah, you can Google it. <laughs> um, my question is about your remark on uh, EOS uh, and centralization. So as you know, um, the like it's a completely different uh, yeah. consensus algorithm. But um, in your slide, you are, you are mentioning a few things that you consider being a very big problem, like minor centralizations and things like that. Um, I would like to know if there is any of those that you believe is actually capable of destroying the network or at least disrupting it long enough. So for example, the, the mining pool centralization, if we see one of these pools attacking the network, I guess most miners will just leave this pool. Um, I guess, I suppose. Maybe you don't agree with that. But is there any of your points that you think is actually major and could be disrupting Bitcoin for more than a few months? Yeah, the, the centralization of uh, pool operators. Um, so they have the, the power of, uh, the capability of doing a lot of uh, network uh, attacks, like 51% uh, and all kinds of attacks. So maybe if it happens, uh, they will just leave the, 
people will just leave the the pool but uh, they have the power they have the capability of doing a lot of damage uh, i don't know exactly i don't have figures but yeah i think it can be it can be quite uh, cat catastrophic um so uh, actually i have to admit i didn't have time to attend all of those days because i got uh, a call but there's one sentence here that, that uh, looks very surprising to me. So say, blockchain, not Bitcoin, cannot succeed. Yes. W w what do you mean here? Um, I just, <laughs> I, I had the question uh, before. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so all the, the, indus all the industry has been, has been uh, based around uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, if you look at the exchanges, they are, you trade uh, alt, altcoin uh, uh, with, uh, in regard with uh, Bitcoin. Um, all the, um, the critical uh, work on cryptography and uh, a lot of a lot of different aspects, uh, technological aspects, are coming from from Bitcoin. Even even if uh, we have some interesting developments on altcoin, but in my opinion, most of the critical work is coming from Bitcoin. Well, I mean that's that's a bit of a bold statement, I would say. Yeah, um, it's a, it's a, yeah. <laughs> so there is, I mean, if you take a look, Ripple, for instance, Ripple, it's been yeah. there for much <laughs> less than Bitcoin, and yet it has much more traction with banks than Bitcoin. Yes. Well, well, let's not, let's not go there, please. Um, Hyperledger, Chain, and many others, yeah, they, are, they are not Bitcoin, different. and they, they are getting traction. And very large industry players, not the exchanges, the very big companies are betting there. Yeah, so regarding the hyperledger, it's um, and it's good this to kind be, of. Um, what I'm saying is good to like Bitcoin. Yeah, great, but also good to be factual. Yeah, um, no, let, uh, if I can comment on the hyperledger and this kind of uh, private blockchain, just that uh, it's not uh, the same technology at all. Uh, so even it's not comparable. Um, we can't have uh, the same uh, the same consensus algorithm and the same technology to secure a, a very small network of 10 participants and uh, an open network of thousands of participants. So uh, it's not on the same, same level. We can discuss it later. I mean, yep. this is, this is, these are technical arguments. It's not, uh, not about the technology. Okay. Uh, I would like to also to make a comment about this. One week ago, I was on a meeting with very old guys on dependability and security and fault tolerance community that meets for 50. 50 years, 40 years, and I heard phrases like, like this one was an important one, and some people saying that uh, working on blockchain is not a job for gentlemen. So <laughs> uh, I think Bitcoin is really important, and I think Bitcoin is already a success. Even if whatever happens, it's already a, a case of success. But uh, it's important also to open up beyond the cryptocurrencies, especially to get these old, old people or let's say, yeah, more conservative mm. people. And, uh, well, one I thing I didn't mention is, in my opinion, we need uh, Bitcoin as uh, money to succeed, decentralized money to succeed in order to see more uh, advanced yeah, developments. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you and I understood and what you, what you said. I'm very <laughs> interested in um, decentralized governance like uh, yeah, yeah. Aragon on uh, Ethereum. Because uh, I think there is this thing about black market and now speculation and then all the people that don't understand the technology think that this is just about that. Yeah. And, uh, the other applications are really important beyond the crypto coin because of that. They are important, but in my opinion, we <coughs> we are way way too early. Uh, decentralized governance is very interesting, or for example, but um, I don't expect to see uh, interesting, uh, really uh, impactful uh, development until uh, ten years. Maybe. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.